Yes, it is 96.9 Cool FM After Dark with Daddy Freeze and Nay Nay Risky up in the building. Okay, okay. Today we're talking about the difference between a hit maker and a noise maker. And um, one of the things that came to mind is as an upcoming artist, you should have a job. Um, you, a lot of Nigerians just, you, you see them at home, not doing any work, and you ask them, what I, I'm an artist. Mm. I don't believe in that. If I told you I wasn't an artist before, mm. I started off as an artist. Mm -hmm. I came to Cool FM as a musician. Okay. I still have my song here. Kayla played it the other day. Well, I was, I was wow. pretty embarrassed. <laughs> Do you understand? But I started off as a musician. I wanted to be a musician. Musician. Mm -hmm. While I was trying to be a musician, I worked on the radio. Okay. I grew my career. Initially, I wanted to be a rapper. Mm -hmm. I've always wanted to be a rapper. I started off in the 90s. I started radio in the 90s. And here's my story. Um, my parents wanted me to be a doctor or a professional, mm -hmm. but I always wanted to be an entertainer. I always wanted to be a rapper. So I used to write my raps and my mom used to, my parents literally freaked, freaked out on me. They, 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 uh, I'm sure they had several heart attacks and finally, <laughs> be, because you know what it feels like when you are a doctor and, and your wife's a professor and then he wants to rap. You know, yeah, my typical, dad just felt that this one is a lost typical cause. Typical African parent. You know, my mom tried to understand. Uh, and we went to Romania once. And I was trying to get into the UK. That time, Romania was not part of the European Union. So I needed a visa. Mm. So I dragged my mother 17 hours from one part of Romania to the other. I said, no, you should, you, we have to apply for a visa. So we got there. And I tried to apply for a UK visa. And they told me that I had to go back to Nigeria to apply from Nigeria. Hmm. Even though the UK was just two hours away. Because I was domiciled in Nigeria. So I had to, I was really sad. You know, because I believed that as soon as I got into the UK, I would get a record deal. Blah, 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 blah. I had all those dreams. So I had to come back to Nigeria. This was 1996. Now, um, when I came back from Bucharest to Bayamare, where I was staying with my mom in Romania, uh, I now, one of my cousins now said, you know what, since you like music so much, I have a radio show. It's 30 minutes a week. You want to join me? So I was like, okay, no problem. Let's go and play. Uh, back then, there were songs like the Fugees. Mark Morrison, um, Return of the Mac, that were raining. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know what, let me go and play Return of the Mac. Let me go and, ah, ah, let me, you know. So I went in and the attraction was instant. Okay. I had a voice for radio. Mm. And the owners of the radio station um, immediately discovered that and started using me for jingles, English jingles, because not many Romanians could speak good English. Mm -hmm. And I could speak English. So they had some English jingles that required voicing. So they were like, ah, oh, that guy. And I did them. And they were like, yes, yes. So they recorded some rap songs for me. Mm. How? Well, they had a production studio. They had some spare beats. Wow. And they said, you know what? Just rap. So they'll give me headphones and I'll <laughs> rap. And, and, and I used to go every day. I used to wake up in the morning, oh go across town, stay a few hours at the radio station and um, record my raps, uh, do the jingle. So it was like a dream come true. Mm. When we now came back, I used to tell, you know, my mom, my mom's family had a huge farm and everybody would gather on the farm and do farm things. I would not go with them or say me, I'm going to the yeah, radio station. Yeah, 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 <laughs> they would fight me. I say, lie, lie. No, me, I, I didn't come from Africa here to come and be <laughs> going to a farm, farm in Nigeria. Please, no, 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 no. It's not me and you people. You're an artist. So I used to go to the radio station. And do you know when I was leaving, they gave me like $100. Hmm. So I earned some money. Now, when I came back to Nigeria, 
I went to look for a friend of mine called Wally Dawn. I don't know if you you guys are. He was <laughs> trending in Ibadan those days. I'm talking about 1996 here. Okay. So I went to look for Wally Dawn. I said, ah, Uncle Wally, I want to come on the radio. You know, so he was now telling me that there was no space in BCOS, but there's space in OGBC. So he would speak. OGBC was in Ogun State. State yeah. So he would speak to one or two people. Let's go to OGBC. So I went to meet my mom. I'm like, mommy, I want to work on the radio. My wife said, ah, so how are you going to face your school? I said, listen, it's not about what you want. I'm going tomorrow for an audition mm-hmm. in OGBC. Please, can I have some money? I must say, no, you're not going for so. I said, no, 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 no. Don't even try me. <laughs> if it means me pulling out a gun and robbing a boss so I can get money to go to a good state. You know me, when I set my mind on something, nothing stops me. Mm-hmm. So my mother knew I was going to get into a lot of trouble. So she was like, okay, you know what? Before you go to this OGBC, I think I know someone who knows someone in this BCOS. Okay. Because BCOS was in Ibadan. Let me put a call through. Oh, so you could put a call through before you did not know. Okay. Anyway, so my mom spoke to her friend, a lady called Rita, who knew Yonju Adegbite. Yonju Adegbite was a big broadcaster in BCOS back then. Mm. I think he was retiring and moving to something else. So um, Yonju now recommended me. Mm. Wow. And he sat down with me to have a conversation. You know, And he told me I wasn't going to make any money, but I should try really hard. But he told me about his experiences of how he used to travel to Lagos to get the music he would play on his show. Um, blah, 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 blah. I learned a lot. And I went, did the audition, and they took me. Of course, I was, I, I, I was not radio material properly, but because Nyonju suggested, uh, and I had a good voice, they could work with that. So I was first... On the AM station, mm. where half the time all we do is, Ake de Kuyawa. You know, Femi Obong later came to join us okay. on the AM station. And Femi was so good at AM. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Femi used to make me feel like I was hopeless. You know, so they moved me to FM, which is what I always wanted. wanted. Yeah. And I deputized under MC Roy. And a certain gentleman called BC Dennis Adigbola, who worked in Ray Power. In uh, after he left BCOS in the nineties, he moved to Ray Power. Yeah. I'm telling you a deep story here. So I was in BCOS while still in school, and while still chasing my music career for five years. Hmm. So when I when I left BCOS in two thousand and one, I had done ex- I resigned. On the exact day I started work, five years down the line. So when I came to Cool FM, I came to Cool FM with five years working experience. experience. But I had come a year before and met Olisa. And I was like, "Um, here's my song. Olisa, listen to it. He said, okay, no problem. Um, And I now chipped it in. I said, I wouldn't mind working on the radio. Mm. So Olisa was like, no problem. When you're done with school, come and I'll give you an audition. And he kept his word. So one year later, when I was done with school, I showed up at Cool FM and I'm like, hello, do you remember me? And he remembered me. He said, okay. They gave me an audition. Um, the bosses liked me and they employed me. Hmm. Now, that coincided with my NYSC year. Okay. So I was doing NYSC on the side. I was still working in BCOS. Hmm. Because I hadn't resigned in BCOS. I wanted to work exactly five years in BCOS. <laughs> so I was shuttling for two months between BCOS and Cool, cool FM and before NYSC. I finally resigned and NYSC. NYSC. Now, for NYSC, I was deployed to Aquaibon. <laughs> Don't tell us what you did. Just no, continue. No, 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 no. <laughs> this is where you know how desperate I can be to do anything I want to do. I said I was not going to have a bath until they changed... <laughs> That if it took three months (laughs) for them to deploy me out of that quiet bomb to Lagos where I had a job. That these people want to destroy my life. Wait. So wait, NYC did that for you. They redeployed you because you said you were not going to have a bath. No, I just was so desperate. That every, anything I had to do, That's what I'm saying. I just made sure I did (laughs) (laughs) to get redeployed out of a quiet bomb. Because I was just there and there were many vultures. It was a beautiful place, but mm. plenty vultures, 
you know, and I wake up in the you morning. You know how these things work. So then, if you just tell us, because I know if it's NYC, I'm doing my NYC now, so I know what you're talking about. So just tell us. You, what you know, it can be very annoying. Mm-hmm. So I came back to Cool FM, and that was in 2002. I remember the day I left Akwaibom finally, when they finally allowed me to go. I got into Lagos on the bomb the day after the bomb blast. Wow. You know the Keja Cantonment bomb yes. blast in 2002. I was at the bus stop just getting off the overnight bus mm. from Akwaibom. You know, when um people were talking about the bomb blast only for me to get home and see that there were uh, about 3000 people who died because of whatever. So, may their souls rest in peace, by the way. So, that was my hustle story. While I was in Cool FM, I still tried my hand at music, but I realized that my calling was radio. It wasn't music, please. Shut up. I realized that my calling was radio. And guess what? I've met quite a few artists who really worked hard on music, but ended up becoming other things. Other things An example yeah. is Basquemau. Hmm. Basquemau started as a rapper. Mm-hmm. And he was a good rapper, mm-hmm. but it just wasn't working out. He just realized that his calling was comedy, and he moved over to comedy, mm-hmm. and boom, went across the world. You see, so my calling was not music, music. it was radio. And I started to excel at radio. What am I trying to say? If you're an upcoming artist, it is wicked of you. <laughs> To mm. sit in your house or to steal and rob or to do yahoo yahoo while waiting to blow. Okay. Get a job. Get a job. Yeah. Any job. Obi Wan was but a the, banker when I met him. Obi Wan quit bank work to face his music career. I remember him in Fidelity Bank because I used to bank with Fidelity Bank. I would go into, any day he's there, I know he'll take me to the front. And, uh, you, you know, he was, he, was, he was a lovely guy. Uh, and he worked at the bank. We don't have those kind of people anymore. We have people who sit at home and expect uh, favors to be done for them. Listen, guys, let me tell you what many of your celebs, people you regard, you pay high regard to today, what they did when they were up and coming. The big Taylor Swift was a praying mantis exterminator. Mm. You know, she worked on a Christmas tree farm, but she had to remove praying mantis pods off the trees, collecting them so the bugs wouldn't hatch inside people's houses. Wow. What about Nicki Minaj? She was a red lobster waitress. She had a job. But I feel- she was fired from Red Lobster after she followed a couple who'd stolen her pen into the parking lot and flipped them off. <laughs> you know, what about Meghan Markle? She was a calligrapher. Beyonce was a salon floor sweeper. But I feel, I think to be fair, these people were actually these things before they decided or they found out they had passion in their different now, fields. Now, well, when they found out, you, I, you need to read Drake's and story. Sometimes- Drake was touring and still working. But for because some he people, hadn't broken even. But for some people, when they want to pursue something, they let go of every other thing and chase it. And, and you're saying they need now, a job. Now, here's think, the problem. Here's the problem with that mentality. You let go of everything and you chase a dream and then you become everybody's liability. You become everybody's... Some you, of them you, have Everybody financiers. has to... Listen, listen. Okay, financiers. That makes sense. You have a rich uncle that invests in you. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. A rich mom that can invest you. You have a rich mom that can invest in you. That makes sense. You get a record label deal. But you see, many people don't want to work with record labels because they don't want to pay 40% of what they make in the future true. to a true. record label. Mm-hmm. So That's what true. they do is they become the liability of the industry. We are now forced to play their music, whether it's good or not. If you don't, they'll come from the emotional blackmail angle that you you don't want them to blow. You are wicked. You are not helping them. Listen, if you are working with a record label, a record label will take care of your promotion. And whatever that involves, if the record label thinks you sitting down with Daddy Freeze would benefit your career, they'll pay for it. I don't really. I even think in this time and age, if of 
that we have social media right if you have a song and even if it's not being played on if you have a song and you put it out because first of all you want to put it out share it with your friends if it doesn't blow with your friends on social media if it doesn't even trend amongst your friends then it's possible that that song is not really great because if you have do a you song, know la sisi elenu mm -hmm. blew on um, i think it was um whatsapp before he even came to Snapchat. Exactly. He used to do broadcast videos and send to his friends. And his friends found them very funny. Very hilarious. And, and he'll post it. And this thing go, goes around. Chioma. Chi girl. Yeah. Chi girl blew on, what's on, on, on Blackberry. She would do those, her songs. Um, do you remember any of them? Those are, yeah, and those broadcast them mm -hmm. on Blackberry. And before you knew it, I was looking for her for an interview. She had grown so big on Blackberry. I spoke about this guy, Cabo Snoop. He blew mm -hmm. on Bluetooth. That's what I think. So if you're, a, if you're an upcoming artist and you have a song that you've put out and your friends, if it doesn't even go around your friends, and then chances are that song is not great. So you have to put in extra work. You have to try and make sure because it's easy for these songs to blow and even get on the radio and become bigger if it's good. Absolutely. I totally agree with you. You know, let's talk about Drake, for instance. Before So Far, So Gone, Thank Me Later, Drake was Aubrey Graham. Mm -hmm. And his first career choice was acting, not music. music. And here's some things you don't know about Drake. Before he became a rap star, he was famous for playing wheelchair-bound Jimmy Brooks in Degrassi. Hmm. This started when he was 15, ladies and gentlemen. Around season four of the Grassy, Aubrey, nobody knew him as Drake then. Oh, they used to call him his oh, <laughs> gay name. <laughs> <laughs> and his co-star Stacy starred themselves in a webisode where they interviewed each other about moving. Uh, and uh, they moved to L.A. Uh, you could YouTube it, you know. You could see him young, cool. Hmm. Do you understand? I think it looks better now, though. You think? Yeah, because he grew up, you know. He did so much, and he had a job. The, 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 the thing that, that, that tripped me about Drake the most was he was working while touring. We're going to take a break and then come right back at you. 96.9 Cool FM. Are you a noisemaker or are you a hit maker? Depends entirely on you. 96.9 Cool FM, Bad Vibes, Mo Loda Boys, and Mr. Easy. Big shout out to Mr. Easy. And that is one artist that didn't have to pay a dime to play. Mm -hmm. Come on, man. Because he started giving us good music. That's so. it. That's it. Ladies and gentlemen, are you a noisemaker or are you a hit maker? My word to upcoming artist is concentrate more on the music and less on the noise by noise i mean you going to cry on social media daddy free's not playing my song is charging me 100k anybody that offers me 100k for airplay obviously is a mediocre i say it with no fear why are you offering me money how come mr easy did not offer me money and he's still blue how come all the acts we've played today world hmm. tenny who else um, who else, we who else have we played today? Um, notes. Notes. Uh, Jealous. Yeah, Fireboy. Fireboy. How come they? How come they're getting airplay? How come Nosa Amadi? Nonso, Nonso Amadi. Amadi. Nonso. Mm -hmm. I don't even know his name well. Get steady airplay, without paying me, without even me ever meeting them. I'm not even following them on Instagram, or and they're not following me either. But my my contract with them is play the good music they produce yeah. that's all play the good music i mean make good music if it's good we'll play it but doesn't mean that you can't appreciate people for playing your song of course of course yeah. feel free you want to send a car my way hey daddy freeze you played my song i'm mm -hmm. now blown daddy freeze take this you range know? wow yeah who's that goat <laughs> <laughs> I, I wouldn't mind. I, I I wouldn't accuse you of being stingy if you sent mm -hmm. me a Range Rover. You know. So basically, if you if you make put out good songs, you don't need to pay to get airplay. You don't need but to. But you can actually appreciate the OAPs for playing it constantly because, like it or not, if we play it on the radio, it gets a wider reach. Let me tell you what um, Ubi did 
Ubi Franklin when mm -hmm. I was promoting Yanya back then. Mm -hmm. Kayla was one of the people who promoted Yanya. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I also pushed the Yanya mm -hmm. on the radio. Because Yanya was good. And one day, Ubi came from the airport through Cool FM and gave me a gift. Mm. He said, this is just to show my appreciation for what you've been doing for Yanya. I'm telling you. And yeah. I still have that gift up until today. I'm not going to mention what it was. But it was appreciation for a job well done. There are many people who I've pushed and never appreciated. Never, ever. Mm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Never ever. But doesn't mean I'll hear a good song and not play it. If your song is good, I would not just play it. I'll download it to my iTunes. I will buy it. I will spend my hard-earned money buying your music. But if all you do is make noise and start controversies about radio presenters or OAPs collecting money from you, I think you've missed your calling. Mm -hmm. Make the noise and let those who make the music get paid mm -hmm. and get played so my word to the upcoming artists and i'm saying this finally is make music not noise mm -hmm. god bless you all yeah.